Household moisture has a variety of possible sources and can be a difficult problem to manage. It can create mold, which can trigger asthma and allergies, and it can also affect a building's long-term durability. Asthma is going to be the main uh, health effect that we see in damp buildings. Uh, there's some additional stuff that goes along with congestion and eye, nose, and throat irritation uh, that are more like hay fever symptoms. Before beginning your renovation, assess any pre-existing moisture problems. Check to see if the siting or grating needs to be improved. Keeping water out of the building is at the heart of managing moisture problems. Um, if you have rainwater problems, those are serious frequently and you have to deal with those. When you're renovating, that's a really good time to do that. Drainage is a common problem often caused by excess surface water or groundwater misdirected toward the building. Water from saturated soils can migrate through concrete and most other masonry materials. By creating a proper foundation drainage system, you can prevent water from being pushed by hydrostatic pressure through small cracks. In non-saturated soils, the migration of moisture can be greatly reduced by using vapor barriers and waterproofing materials. Flashing helps direct water away from wall cavities to the drainage plane. You can ensure proper water drainage by utilizing construction supervision and careful architectural detailing of the drainage system. Diverting water away from the building prevents bulk water entry into foundations and basements. And you can prevent moisture-related problems such as mold and the deterioration of wood and other building materials. A building scientist can help you design a renovation that will correct any past moisture problems and prevent future ones. A lot of times, just by the, a, a thorough visual inspection and talking to the super, I, I can figure out what's going on with the moisture problems in the building. Moisture can become a problem even when everyone is doing their individual job correctly. As a developer or project manager, you'll need to determine that your team is working together. During the renovation, you can address any exterior or interior water leaks. In wet areas, such as bathrooms, using moisture-resistant materials reduces moisture buildup and the potential for indoor mold growth. These are important measures for eliminating odors and health hazards to residents. In bathrooms and kitchens, installing properly sized and controlled exhaust fans reduces moisture condensation, lowering the potential for indoor mold growth. Kitchen fans also help remove air contaminants as a result of cooking byproducts or combustion gases from fuel burning appliances. Energy Star qualified fans use 65% less energy on average than standard models and move more air with less noise. Setting timers and humidistats will help ensure that fans regularly remove moisture and provide increased ventilation. By ensuring that your buildings have appropriately sized equipment, you can provide adequate dehumidification, which prevents short cycling. By reducing the excess moisture in the air, you are inhibiting mold growth and resident discomfort. For below grade spaces, it's a good idea to use moisture resistant materials to reduce mold growth and the accumulation of other contaminants. Overall, to maintain moisture, keep indoor humidity low and conduct regular inspections of the home's plumbing, water sources, HVAC systems, and carpentry. A wide variety of pests can cause expense and disease for homeowners and tenants. If something's wrong with the building, you've got pests. So you need to look at pests as an indicator of more fundamental problems, as well as a problem in and of itself. Before embarking on a renovation project, Take stock of current or past pest problems. A visual inspection can identify the type and scope of the problem. There is a method that works to cost-effectively manage pest damage with the least possible hazard to people, property, and the environment. It's called Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. What integrated Pest Management involves sealing out the pests, excluding them. It means controlling the moisture and food sources. It's your responsibility to educate homeowners about proper food storage, garbage disposal, and visual monitoring. 
Monitoring can detect the exact location and size of the pests, resolving the problem more quickly. IPM involves using the least toxic measures to control pests. Boric acid's been on the market for a long time. It's a light powder that when you put it just a dusting in places behind the walls, underneath the cabinets, places that you can work on in construction, but not really afterwards. When the cockroaches run through that powder, it kills them. It lasts for about 20 years, and that means that not only does the maintenance crew have to be sensitive to water problems and cleaning out the trash, removing it from the dumpster, but each of the residents have a critical role to play. You can maintain a pest-free environment by ensuring that your tenants, facility staff, or pest management contractors follow an integrated pest management approach. Radon gas is a radioactive gas that, as far as our senses are concerned, doesn't exist. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't feel it. There's no way to detect it without measuring it. According to the EPA, radon is the leading cause of lung cancer among non-smokers and kills nearly 22,000 people annually. It's a naturally occurring soil gas that can leak into homes through cracks in the slab and foundation. Although some areas are more prone to radon than others, the EPA recommends testing all homes. To detect if radon levels are above four picocuries per liter, you can conduct either a short or long-term test. You can reduce concentrations of radon in your homes either passively or actively. Passive radon-resistant features should be installed below the slab along with a vertical vent pipe. For a more intensive mitigation, you can use an active radon system. A fan is added to the system to actively pull radon from beneath the house and vent it to the outside. The radon reduction systems are very effective at uh, reducing radon levels. Often 99.9 percent .9 level reductions are possible. However, since lowering high radon levels requires technical knowledge and special skills, you should use a qualified radon mitigation contractor. Your state radon office can provide references to these specialists. These systems do need occasional maintenance. You can either remind your customers of this or plan to monitor your warning devices on a regular basis. Be sure to replace equipment when needed.